Solomon warned us, never trust a woman who does this. Apart from the special honor you must accord to the Word of God, which was written by divine inspiration, when experienced people speak about a matter, wisdom demands that you pay attention to it. Today, we want to study the kind of woman you should never trust. Although several scriptures warn us against ungodly women, we will give special consideration to the warnings of Solomon. At the end of this sermon, we will look at what a godly woman looks like. When it comes to experience with women, Solomon is a good teacher. Of all the kings that ever lived, no one had the record of marrying up to 700 wives and 300 concubines. Solomon altogether had marital connections with 1,000 women. At the end of his life, he wrote the famous verse of the scripture that says, Vanity upon vanity. Solomon sold himself to pleasure with women, but his actions only amounted to foolishness. When such a man speaks of the kind of woman you should never trust, you should listen aptly. In the same breath, when such a man speaks of the kind of woman you should look for and trust, you should also listen aptly. In the book of Proverbs, King Solomon offers us his advice on the qualities we should look for in a wife. He tells us that a virtuous woman is worth far more than rubies, that she is hardworking, and that she is a good manager of her household. He also tells us that a good wife is trustworthy, loving, and kind, and that she is a source of joy and blessing to her husband. In the book of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon tells us that he had many wives and concubines, but he also admits that he made mistakes in his choices. He warns us not to be led astray by beauty or charm, but to seek a woman of good character, intelligence, and kindness. He advises us to look beyond outward appearances and to choose a woman who is loyal, trustworthy, and shares our values and beliefs. My dear brothers and sisters, King Solomon's advice is as relevant today as it was in his time. Choosing the right partner is one of the most important decisions we will make in our lives, and it is a decision that will affect us for years to come. Let's study the Proverbs of Solomon concerning the kinds of women you should never trust or allow into your life. The Dangers of the Immoral Woman Proverbs 23, 27, and 28 For a harlot is a deep pit, and a seductress is a narrow well. She also lies in wait as for a victim, and increases the unfaithful among men. In this passage, King Solomon speaks of two types of women, the harlot and the wayward wife. Both are dangerous and have the potential to lead men astray. The harlot is compared to a deep pit, a place of danger and darkness. She is also compared to a bandit who lies in wait, ready to pounce on unsuspecting men. The wayward wife, on the other hand, is compared to a narrow well. This well may seem inviting and refreshing at first, but it is ultimately a place of danger and death. She is also a multiplier of unfaithful among men, spreading her influence and leading others down a path of destruction. King Solomon's warning is clear. Sexual immorality can lead us down a path of destruction. It can destroy our relationships, our families, and our lives. It can also have far-reaching consequences, affecting not only ourselves, but those around us. And a perfect example of the type of woman spoken of in Proverbs 23, 27, and 28 is Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife is a character in the Bible, and her story serves as a warning to all of us about the dangers of sexual temptation and the consequences of giving in to it. Potiphar's wife was the wife of Potiphar, an Egyptian official who was in charge of Pharaoh's palace guard. The Bible tells us that she was attracted to Joseph, and she repeatedly tried to seduce him. But Joseph refused her advances, saying, How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? We know that Joseph lived in Potiphar's house for eleven years, and we know that Potiphar's wife repeatedly tried to seduce him. So this could have lasted for eleven years of Joseph resisting temptation. Proverbs 23, 27, and 28 For a harlot is a deep pit, and a seductress is a narrow well. 
She also lies in wait as for a victim and increases the unfaithful among men. Despite Joseph's refusal, Potiphar's wife continued to pursue him, and one day she cornered him and tried to force herself on him. Joseph managed to escape, leaving behind his cloak in her hands. She then falsely accused him of attempting of making sport of her. We can learn a lot of lessons from both Potiphar's wife and from Joseph. Lessons we can learn from Potiphar's wife. The wrong people will accuse you and try to send you to your death when you are innocent and you haven't done anything wrong. This is unfortunate, but that is the world we live in. There are men and women exactly like Potiphar's wife. I wish the world was a place where everyone was honest and did not bear false witness against one another. But that is simply not the world we live in. In the day and age of Joseph and Potiphar's wife, the punishment was brutal, and the life of a slave like Joseph was worthless. Therefore, Potiphar's wife knew her accusation would practically mean a death sentence for Joseph. Yet she still went ahead and lied about this honorable man, simply because he did not bend to her will. Women like this still exist, and equally, men exactly like Potiphar's wife still exist. Because you didn't do what they wanted you to do, they will not hesitate to send you to your grave. Potiphar's wife is a warning to all of us about the dangers of sexual temptation. She was a woman who was driven by her own lustful desires and who was willing to use her power and influence to get what she wanted. She was willing to destroy another person's life in order to satisfy her own lustful desires. She was willing to send Joseph to his grave in order to satisfy her own lustful desires. As Christians, we are called to live lives of purity and holiness. We are called to avoid sexual immorality and to honor God with our bodies. This means that we must be careful about the company we keep and the choices we make. Potiphar's wife serves as a warning to us about the dangers of sexual temptation and the consequences of giving in to it. We must be on guard against the temptations that come our way, and we must resist them with all our might. We must also be careful about the company we keep and the people we associate with. Because the truth be told, there are still Potiphar's wives in this world who are both male and female, and to think there are not is to be naive. She was a married woman attempting to commit adultery with someone that worked for her and could have easily felt pressured into giving in to her demands. No concern for her husband, no concern for her marriage, no concern for human life. Potiphar's wife had an evil character. This is why she is a perfect example of the type of woman spoken of in Proverbs 23, 27, and 28. Potiphar, when selecting his wife, clearly did not focus on character. Be concerned with the character of the people you choose to interact with. Lessons we can learn from Joseph. Joseph's resistance to temptation is a powerful example for all of us. It reminds us that no matter how strong the temptation may be, we always have a choice. We can choose to give in to our desires and indulge in sin, or we can choose to resist temptation and honor God with our bodies and our actions. Potiphar's wife could have attempted to seduce Joseph for a span of 11 years. 11 years! However, Joseph remained faithful. He did not fall into youthful lusts. I am sure Potiphar's wife would have been an attractive woman, but he resisted the temptation. We always have a choice. Genesis 39, 8 But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. In response to Potiphar's wife's advances, Joseph remembered how much he had to lose. And the truth is today, every single person listening to me right now, young and old, has much to lose. Married or single has much to lose by giving in to temptation and falling for the wrong person. That temptation is not worth losing your marriage or putting your children through a divorce. That temptation is not worth losing your innocence or your ability to serve the Lord. 
dealing with the wrong person cost Samson his life. This is serious. What will it cost you? What will it cost you? Focus on character. Now that we have looked at the kind of woman you must avoid as a man, and the type of woman you must refuse to be as a woman, let us now see a few examples of the kind of woman the Bible recommends to look for, and the type of woman females should strive to be. There are some wonderful, God-fearing, honest, kind women in the world. And if you are married to one, or if your child is one of them, cherish her and love her. It is a lie straight from the depths of hell that there are no longer any wonderful women. They are there. God hasn't stopped creating His wonderful daughters. They are there. The Gracious Woman Proverbs 11.16 a gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. A gracious woman is kind, polite, and courteous. She is the type of woman that suits every Christian man for marriage. Although there is a high level of decadence in our society, God still preserves godly daughters for His sons. If you allow God to lead you, He will bring to your path a gracious woman. Proverbs 18.22 reminds us that a good wife is a favor every man should receive from the Lord. A gracious woman will not dishonor her husband, as Vashti did to King Xerxes. She is polite, and she supports the vision of her husband, unlike Jezebel, who stirred Ahab to do evil before the Lord. A gracious woman supports her husband to serve the Lord. In this proverb, we see a beautiful truth that is still relevant today. It tells us that a woman who is gracious, who embodies kindness, elegance, and refinement, will retain honor. But what does it mean to be gracious? To be gracious means to be kind and considerate towards others, to be polite and respectful in our interactions, to show compassion and empathy towards those around us. Graciousness is a quality that reflects the love of Christ and it is a virtue that is becoming increasingly rare in our world today. The proverb tells us that a woman who is gracious will retain honor. Honor is a word that carries a lot of weight. It refers to a deep sense of respect and esteem that we hold for someone who has distinguished themselves through their character, their actions, and their reputation. Honor is a precious commodity that is hard to earn but easy to lose. The Virtuous Woman Proverbs 31, 10 and 11 Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. To be virtuous means to have excellent moral character. The price of a virtuous woman is far above gold and silver. She can win the trust of her husband. The proverb tells us that the heart of her husband safely trusts in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. This woman is a source of security and trust for her husband, and he can rely on her completely. She is a woman of great worth, and her value is not measured by material possessions, but by her character, her actions, and her love. This woman is virtuous, which means she embodies the highest moral and ethical values. She is honest, trustworthy, and upright in all her dealings. She is kind and compassionate towards others, and she serves her family and community with a generous and loving heart. She is a woman of faith, and her life is rooted in her relationship with God. The proverb also tells us that her price is far above rubies. Rubies are precious gems, but the value of this woman cannot be compared to any material possession. Her worth is immeasurable, and it is derived from the beauty of her character, the purity of her heart, and the depth of her love. My dear sisters, let us all strive to be like this virtuous woman. Let us aspire to embody the highest moral and ethical values. Let us be honest, trustworthy, and upright in all our dealings. Let us show kindness and compassion to those around us, and let us serve our families and communities with a generous and loving heart. Let us be women of faith, 
and let our lives be rooted in our relationship with God. There are still wonderful godly women in the world, and as a man, you should strive to look for her, and as a woman, you should strive to be her.